Okay, so as we continue with the talk, as I said at the beginning, that's the mausoleum where Dr. Cromer was eventually laid to rest. But before we even get there, you would observe that there are a couple of trees on the park. Some were planted by prominent personalities, um, mostly African heads of state who have visited this memorial since it was built. So right there, for example, is a mango tree which was planted by the late Nelson Mandela of South Africa. He was here not long after his release from jail in 1991 because of the role Ghana played in the struggle against apartheid. We have one also planted by the late Robert Mugabe mm. of Zimbabwe. Yeah. There's one by the former president of Cote d'Ivoire, um, Angola, Namibia, Kenya, and other African heads of state. So please, let's come to the mausoleum. So this is the mausoleum which contains Dr. Palm and Cromer's final remains. But the protocol is that whilst we are here, and he being the first leader of this country, um, we observe a minute of silence in his memory. So I'll please crave your patience for us to do that for him. May so rest in peace. So, since Dr. Kroma passed in 1972, this was actually his third burial place. He was our president until 1966, 24th of February, when his government was unfortunately overthrown through a military and police coup d'etat. That forced him to go into exile in a country called Guinea, also in West Africa, where he was accepted and also made co-president of Guinea because of the role he played in Guinea's independence struggle much later. That was where he lived, so he fell sick in 1971. They took him to Bucharest, Romania, for medical treatment. That was where he died of prostate cancer in 72, at the age of 63. They then embalmed his body in Romania, and then took him back to Guinea, where he was given a state funeral and burial as co-president. But then three months later, they transferred his body from Guinea back to his family house in Ghana. He was born in the western part of Ghana. And they returned him because at the time he died, unfortunately, his mother was still alive. And he happened to be the mother's only child. So she requested, they brought him back home. That was where he was until when Ghanaians thought that 
he deserved a proper national honor based on all he was able to do for us and the continent at large. So this was built in 1991 by our former president called Jerry John Rawlings, who died about a month ago. So when he finished here, uh, he was transferred from his family house to this place. So this is his third and hopefully his final resting place. It's built of Italian marbles, but the architect was a young man. Back then, he was among the leaders on the continent who believed in and also promoted strongly pan-Africanism. And eventually, among those who formed the Continental Union, what we now call the African Union. And to give a more practical expression to that, he married an African. His wife was an Egyptian, but their marriage was politically arranged. It was done by the then Egyptian president, that's Gamal Abdul Nasser, an attempt to kind of unite Arab Africa to Black Africa. Her name was Fapia Enkroma, but she died only in 2007, back home in Egypt. But not long after she died, the news came from their children that during her last days, it was a wish to be very close to her husband. So the news got to our then government, it was discussed and eventually agreed. So they brought her back, gave her also a state funeral, and eventually they also brought her remains. So she was also laid to rest right away. So you can take pictures here if you wish to. Okay, two is right here. You didn't explain if the plan worked, the plan to unite uh, North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. The plan? Did it, yeah, did it work? For people who are wondering, based on what you just said, well, in, initially it worked, but the issue is that our brothers from North Africa often don't want to be called Africans. So that's an issue we have with countries like Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. Morocco. They want to have ties with the Arab League than to Africa. But the then Egyptian president believed strongly in Pan-Africanism and the fact that Egypt was part of Africa. That's why he actually pushed for that to happen. And they have three children out of the union. I'm two gentlemen now and a lady. But before he married her, he had a son from an earlier Ghanaian relationship. So they are all four. And they are all surviving. Um, we have two of them currently in Ghana, one in Egypt and the other in the US. And two of them are also now active politicians. That's the only daughter and the youngest son. But they are also in different political parties, not on the same side. But, but the daughter still belongs to the father's party, which is CPP. That's Convention People's Party, which unfortunately is now a minority party in Ghana. Kuma flipping over in that grave. <laughs> Please, let's, let's come this way. times if you see me coming close up on you. You know, you're a last child, man. Don't, please don't mess up the shirt. Back away, back away a little bit. How you get down here anyway? I jumped. He's a master. Symbolic reading, what explains? Let's come this way. Are we coming back after this? Are we coming back? I'm not sure. <laughs> because from, from the meet. 
You, you, can, you can send that, yes, that's fine. Now, the shape of the mausoleum has its own symbolic meaning, which is all about him. Now, from up to the base, it looks like a stump of a tree. It's like a tree growing, but then cut up in the middle. One meaning is that he couldn't finish what he was doing for us before he was overthrown. So more or less, it represents Dr. Nkrumah's unfinished work. And also in our villages in Ghana and other parts of the continent, when our farmers are from their farms and tied, they would rest under a shade of a tree. So he's buried down there, and we believe that he is also resting under a shade of a tree. When you look at the shape of the left or the right, for example, let's take the right. From up to the base, it looks like a huge machete, which has been reversed or turned upside down. And we call it the royal sword or the state sword. Traditionally, when you hold a sword upwards or when a blade is made to face up, it means war. But when we reverse it like this, it represents peace. Meaning that all he did in those days were also done in the name of peace. But just that he was not well understood. And the black star up there <coughs> stands for all black people. A symbol adapted from Marcus Garvey. Just on the walls of the museum, we also have some motifs, which is also about him. Above the entrance is a symbol of three heads with an eagle with a wing spread. And we have an adage or a popular saying here which goes like, three heads are better than one. Which stands for unity. And in unity also knows life strength because the eagle is a strong bird. So what he was saying was that Africans should unite so that one day the continent can also become a strong force in the world. On the left hand side, extreme left, is a gentleman holding a sword, a symbol of political authority. And on the extreme right is a lady holding a staff with an egg in it, more or less trying to advise the one with the power, that power is also very fragile. When you have it, you must manage it, else it may go against you. Then we have the symbol of the Sankofa bird, which stands for go back to your roots, more or less encouraging our brothers out there to always come back to the continent. A symbol of three, um, um, two people holding a staff with a crossbow. Mm -hmm. That symbol in Akan, one of our languages says, Nyamimu Namewu, which means that if God died, I will also die. But since Almighty God can never die, <laughs> we believe that though he's dead, his spirit and his visions still lives on. So some Ghanaians would say, Kwame Nkroma never dies. There you go, that's for real. So let's come in there. As I said, in there we cannot take pictures. So let's. And if they do, just don't upload on net because they're gonna say, hey, that's some people that African African t-shirts do that. <laughs> and they won't let you come back, huh? <laughs> All right, Mr. Man, you gonna come out here and do a video with me? He's gone. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah.